Good warring time, my little soldiers and psychos of video watching entertainment, and prepare to enjoy war, for we are going to be talking about the greatest war in all the multiverse, the war that we shall all march in one day, the Blood War. I will describe the concept of the Blood War, its two warring factions, and I'll explain why its existence is so vital to the continued long longlivitude of the greater cosmos as a whole. As always, the majority of this is my opinion, so if you have a disagreement, then you may be serving in the Blood War sooner than you think. But with that out of the way, let's begin. So, the Blood War is a massive, explosive, never-ending battle between the rancorous demonic hordes of the Abyss and the cunning military might of the Nine Hells. This conflict has been raging on since time immemorial, with the powers of chaos constantly being tricked and outmaneuvered by the forces of lawfulness, who are in turn constantly being overwhelmed by the seemingly never-ending might of chaos. It's a cosmic dance of shifting power where everybody is a loser, and if any side ever edges too close into being a victor, they won't be for long. See, the Demons of the Abyss are the pure, unfiltered embodiments of chaotic evil, the type of murderous, debaucherous, sinful perversions given shape and told to run wild, corrupting and mutating everything in their path with the power of extreme extreme funk. Left unchecked, demons would run rampant across the entire multiverse, punching a hole into every plane of existence and wiping their crusty stain over all that they come across. Their power is great enough that it would take the combined might of all the masters of the universe to push back this horrific threat, and even then, if you've seen my demon guide, you know that this still may not be enough. So it puts the devils in a bit of a strange place where they're actually the good guys of this story, keeping the destruction of existence at bay for all of time while the rest of the world goes on like nothing is even happening. Of course, the only reason why they do that is because devils understand that there won't be a world to conquer for themselves if the demons take it all, so maybe they aren't as altruistic as I gave off. But you won't see a devil tell you that. In the few times where someone is able to have a small talk with a creature of the Nine Hells, that devil will undoubtedly spin a tale of their exploits in the Blood War, like a war hero without any empathy. They'll tell you that if it weren't for them, the world would fall into chaos, so really, your souls should already be owed to the Nine Hells, but life isn't fair and everyone is ungrateful. And to be fair, it's not like fighting in the Blood War comes without its risks. Normally, when a devil dies while out on a job, their soul will just slip right back into the Nine Hells and they can go back about their day. But an evil soul that's killed within the Nine Hells is gone for good, which makes fighting in Avernus, the first layer of Hell, bad because it means that slain soldiers don't respawn, but it's good because, hey, it makes it that much easier to get their equipment back. And this is why devils need souls so badly. Without the constant replenishing of ranks that bartering for the souls of the weak and deprived provides, then the devils would just keep getting pounded by demon girth until they're completely spent, and then the demons would just go on to pound something else. The soul machine that the devils have worked out keeps the war normally equalized enough that most fighting takes place along the River Styx, where the Abyss meets Avernus. And thankfully for us, the demon munching churns up devil souls so prevalently that without the demons, the devils would expand rapidly with no one able to stop them, and their full attention could be focused on total world domination. So maybe the demons are the good guys? There are no good guys here, only losers. And speaking of losers, I may talk about the Blood War like it's this isolated thing deep in the negative plane of the multiverse having no effect on the day-to-day -day life so long as neither side finally tips the balance against one another. But don't worry, no one is safe from demon girth. See, if you've watched my demon video, then you know that demons love to move into the material realm like they're a bad roommate and then completely trash the place until you're forced to either move out or be enveloped in the ever-evolving layers of filth. Devils aren't exactly interested in this, acting as the estranged tenant down the hall that's just watching all this go down from their Facebook page and silently thanking themselves that they keep rejecting all of the demons' advances. But what they are interested in is making sure that when demons are out mucking up the place, they aren't finding any potentially powerful weapons, lore, or crafting recipes that could win the blood war for them. So since devils can't make deals for souls outside of hell, their usual purpose for being anywhere at a given time is to either find that purple tier loot for themselves, or annihilate any demons that they think might have it, which includes destroying any towns, people, or civilizations that could be potential propagators of this knowledge. A lot of the time, when a devil comes through and starts slaughtering for seemingly no reason, it's not even because of anything that the town did wrong. For the devil, this is just business, and the devil's business is keeping you safe from the demons at the expense of, well, you. Now, that does beg the question of why the forces of good don't just rally together and crush both the demons and the devils since they're so busy fighting each other, this should be an easy target, right? Well, it all has to do with a little thing that people like our good friend Mordenkainen call the balance. The balance is the theory that if either side were to gain too much of a foothold in the blood war, then they would take over the whole of existence soon after. I've talked about that at length, but the balance goes further by realizing that if both sides were in danger of being wiped out, 
out, then the two might actually learn to play nice in the face of an otherwise insurmountable threat. And then that would lead to the entire multiverse going to war. A war that no one is certain they can win, and no one wants to roll those dice. It's for this reason that demons and devils have to exist. A demon taking over an entire material realm has to happen, so that the demons can have a foothold to gain more troops, because the devils are starting to root them out. Or a devil must be allowed to take control of a nation's king, for they are the only ones with enough knowledge to know how to prevent the demons from uncovering the secret artifacts that lie beneath the city. In the balance, a person finds true neutrality, as they not only allow acts of great good to keep all that is holy and righteous powerful enough to push back the tides of negativity, but they must also allow and oftentimes participate in acts of great evil that will keep the blood war going and prevent the powers of darkness from becoming one single unified threat. The blood war must always exist. There must always be a never-ending battle between the forces of demons and devils. For if the blood war ends, if one side proves victorious, if any one evil is allowed to win, then we all lose. But that'll about do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring the bells of war, join my Discord, join my Twitter, and maybe support me on Patreon so that I can afford the crippling debt that comes with spending so much money on war. But yeah, Davy out.